Thomas Buchanan to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Business Committee for bringing this very important debate through to the floor of the House today uh, for uh, some debate. Anyone walking into any of the legal, any of the head shops in Northern Ireland today would be forgiven for thinking that drug abuse is legal in this country. New psychoactive substances, also commonly called legal highs, can be purchased across the counter with the same ease as which we pop into our local supermarkets to do the weekly grocery shopping. In the same way that we can collect loyalty points for our groceries, drug taking is being normalized by rewarding loyalty points for purchasing these types of products in conjunction with drug taking paraphernalia and all sorts of weird and wonderful gadgetries aimed at making your drug taking experience more pleasurable. The online market and legal highs is also exploding. In this lucrative market, a website which claims to be uh, probably the number one head shop in the UK openly sells all manner of drug taking equipment in conjunction with urine uh, neutralizers, which have apparently saved thousands of skins in the war against drugs, with a full list of instructions as to how to evade getting caught taking them. This is against the backdrop where these so called legal highs are sold legally by hiding behind thinly veiled disclaimers mm -hmm. that these products are not fit for human consumption, when it is clearly evident that their sole use is for human consumption. It is imperative that we tackle the issue of the unregulated uh, availability of these drugs. Cannabis, heroin and marijuana are old news. Instead, these so-called legal highs are slick impersonations of banned illegal drugs, but are more lethal, more potent and more deadly than any of the outlawed products whose effects they are designated to uh, mimic. Hanging around city street corners trying to locate a dealer is no longer the case for users. Head shops are available all over the country, and the rise in use of online purchases of these products is alarming. A so-called legal high is a drug that is not controlled under the Misuse of Drugs Act and is therefore legal to possess. However, although not uh, regulated by the Misuse of Drugs Act, these substances are regulated by the Medicines Act, which means that it is, legal to, it is illegal to sell, supply or advertise them for human consumption. It is this loophole in legislation which ensures that manufacturers of these products are able to package legal drugs and highly attractive packaging deliberately targeted at our young people. And yet all they need to do is label this same package with a disclaimer, not fit for human consumption. And they are openly, openly proffering their wares in towns and cities all around the UK and on the internet. There's something badly wrong with the legislative system in this country. When this loophole in the law enables such brazen practices which are setting our young people on a path of destruction and, in tragic cases, death, where manufacturers are not held accountable for what they are doing, while the statutory agencies sit back and wring their hands in despair that nothing can be done. Another problem with the legal highs which make them notorious, difficult to police and to control is the sophistication behind the rapid development of new products. One of the most widely recognized drug monitoring groups, EMCDDA, stated that there were 280 potential harmful legal highs produced in 2012 in Europe alone. It is estimated that a new product is brought to the market every single week in the UK. Given the immense scale of the problem, governments, statutory agencies and community groups have hit a brick wall in trying to control, monitor or restrict the sale of these products. The rapidly evolving drug, drug landscape seems on the surface to be impossible to man. The government and the law are constantly playing catch-up to these suppliers who have sophisticated mechanisms to produce more and more effective concoctions of these products. Banning named brands uh, such as Magic Dragon is not the answer because as soon as one product is banned, suppliers can go back to their manufacturers and within days, their chemists provide a slight tweak to the ingredients and they have a new creation ready for the market the following week. What is needed is a ban on generic substances of a particular type and class which are found in many of these different brands. 
It is estimated that a new product is brought onto the market every week. Absence of scientific data is scant, if available at all, due to the rapid uh, de development uh, turnaround in manufacturing. Scientific research is lagging behind highly sophisticated manufacturing processes. When a young person takes some, of, uh, some form of product, they have no guarantee of what is in the substance, the concentration of dosage, or what symptoms they will experience. After admission to hospital, when uh, something goes wrong after taking a legal high, toxicologists can be fighting a losing battle against the clock in an effort to even begin to determine what has been taken, never mind the amount of dosage. By taking legal highs, a person is gambling with their life and the stakes are high. In most cases, young people have no idea how lethal, how lethal, potent and dangerous a product is which they are taking. Potent, dangerous and fatal products are freely available across Northern Ireland and online. Our children could potentially buy legal highs within two clicks online. The disparity here is ridiculous. How is it, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, that in this day and age, with the sophistication of technology, the advances in, leg in legislation, that it is possible for these manufacturers to get around the law in such a simple manner and for such deadly products to be freely available on the market? In my constituency, there is a head shop in the centre of Oma Town. The owner does a lucrative trade in legal highs labelled as pot puree, incense or bath salts. The seemingly innocent exterior of the shop masks a lucrative trade in these products which are wrecking and destroying the lives of our young people. In the absence of published data on these products, it is necessary to, rel to rely on antidote reports from users. One of my constituents, 24-year-old, is an example of a young man who got hooked on legal highs. His initial introduction was to a substance called bumblebee. He started taking them as a social activity to fit in with others. These uh, packages had no warnings on them and he became heavily addicted. Looking back, he reports that he was addicted within one week of taking them. Then he started smoking another product called Magic Dragon, which he described as a smokable heroin. If he took it with alcohol, he became violently ill and so he smoked it without mixing it with other substances. Initially, this gave him a high, but he describes the never-ending cycle of constantly chasing for the next hit. After coming off these drugs, at almost six months on from this treatment, he still cannot work due to suffering from depression and still has days when he has no motivation or can't even get out of bed. This is one example of a young man who had a good job, had good employment, had a good wage, and has lost everything as a result of the addiction to these legal highs. The sale of these goods does not only affect the young people who go here for their next fix, it has also been linked to the rise of suicides in our area. Side effects from these drugs are so diverse, and many reports extreme lows after taking them, which could contribute tribute to the feelings of hopelessness, depression experienced by many young people throughout Northern Ireland today. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, it is high time that we tackle the legal highs head on. I believe legal highs must be regulated by the Misuse of Drugs Act and should not hide behind the Medicines Act 1968, where the reality is that these substances have no known medical use. A new approach in the battle to control these substances is required. In recent weeks, we have seen how Belfast City Council handled a landmark case and were successful in removing substances from head shops across the city. Orders were granted against the head shop owners as safety and labelling information was deemed to be inadequate. While I welcome this action which paves the way for management of enforcement of legal highs, it does not address the root problem, and I feel although a step in the right direction, it does not go far enough. It's not enough to shake our heads and condemn the sale of these substances, and due to complications surrounding legislation, lament the fact that nothing can be done. We have to do something to look at this problem from an alternative angle and find a solution to rid our society of this highly sophisticated, dangerous and misleading scourge in Northern Ireland today. Every delay means that our young people 
are unwittingly being dragged into an addiction which can have far-reaching implications for their health, their employment, their families, their relationships, and in some cases, death. I move the motion.